Sound check, sound check. Hopefully everybody's hearing me good. You should be hearing me and not seeing me. Yes, yes. No, no. Hey, John. Hey, Lyle. Hey, Taco. Awesome. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Hopefully everybody's had a, a good weekend. You know, you kind of do what I do over here, and I love the weekends. <laughs> Even though there, I really have no holiday or no, uh, no weekend per se, it, it slows down, <laughs> if you will. So I, I still force myself to take a weekend. St. Saint, Saint Thomas, Ontario. How far, hey, Dan, how far away from T.O. is that? I have no idea, Taco, what you just put in there. I used to live, uh, Dan, I used to live uh, downtown Toronto. Queen and Spadina, I used to live. Taco, what was the last thing you 125 miles from Toronto? All right, not too bad. Not too bad. Although when we put that into kilometers, oh, my God, it's so far away. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I, I find, I think most people do too as well, it's like, if I'm going to give a distance, miles is easy to understand, right? A hundred miles, hundred kilometers, hundred miles is easy to understand. But when I use like temperature, uh, I, I think Celsius is an easier way for me to understand 40 degrees. Whoa, that's hot. And that's 120. Whoa. That's like an oven. Does it really give you a sense for it? Almost. I feel like 110, 115 degrees sounds too hot, but 40 degrees is Celsius. Dang. Four Oaks, North Carolina. Awesome. Sylvia will be joining us here uh, momentarily to always give us some insight. I don't know about everybody, but uh, you know, I learned now. Granted, I'm not building websites on a daily basis like I was before. But I thought I knew the platform until he gets in there and it's like, wow, there's some. Um, it, it's hard to remember all the all the kind of stuff he teaches. But again, that's education is uh, in general. I decided to start learning uh, Italian through one of those phone apps. And uh, it, it, it's difficult to force yourself to learn something every single day. Montreal, Montreal Canadiens, my favorite team. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still in, uh, in Minnesota. I'll be here. I'm actually going to... Uh, grin and bear it and go through a, a winter time but i'm already <laughs> everywhere i'm driving i'm like oh god i gotta have to see this in like five feet of snow that's not going to be fun that's not going to be fun i do not miss the snow i remember uh living in air when i was living in arizona you know you could hour and a half away and i'm skiing so i do it hour and a half go away hour and a half later and I'm up there and we're skiing. And then I go to my friend who I went with, I go, I paid to come up here and be in this weather. You got to be kidding me. I'm freezing my butt off. It's the snow is hard. I just went and sat by the fire. I said, yeah, the snow's not for me. <laughs> and now I'm going to be in the thick of things for a whole winter. Hey, Silvio. Hey there. Hi everybody. To catch a maple leaf. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Good one, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So we were just uh, just chit chatting here a little bit, uh, Silvio. Obviously, uh, you know when you get Canadians, a whole bunch of Canadians in a room. Hi <laughs> from Sarasota. Greetings, all. Greetings, greetings. Awesome. Chris still in Switzerland. Uh, I wish I could get you to get me a Swiss Army knife and mail it to me, but it's not the same as going and getting another one. All right. So excellent. So everybody, thank you so much for uh, showing up for those that uh, were tuning in a, a little bit later. Thank you as well uh, for attending our webinars. Again, we'd like to kind of also state that you can log into your platform, see our YouTube channel there too as well, uh, and subscribe there and catch all the latest and greatest, uh, at least for the webinars that come out. And we'll be expanding that YouTube channel as we go forward. But it's a great place to be able to uh, have all your videos right there, especially for the webinars. Because uh, with all the information that Silvio, you know, gives us, as I was just saying a little bit earlier, it's near impossible to remember it all. So it's great to have the webinar to kind of 
go back and relearn, if you will. Calgary, awesome. So before we get going, Diego, good to have you on again. And again, uh, Diego, big shout out to you for uh, taking the uh, Italian version and really running with it. Awesome. It kind of just shows you the powerful, uh, what you can do with this platform. And remember, we've said to before, we've actually said to people, and Diego is one of the ones who took us up on the offer and he is killing it. If you have a different language and you think you have what it takes to run uh, this platform in your native part of the world, let us know. Translate a file. I know it took Diego uh, roughly about two weeks for him to translate the uh, the file. And then now we have a Moby first uh, in Italian, which is in the Italian language. Uh, so it's always open for that, especially, you know, French, German. We have Italian down, you know. Spanish would be a big one. I think we got the Canadian version down. <laughs> so just to let you know. Um, awesome. So way to go, uh, Diego, out there. So, well, for many of you, you've been seeing the uh, the website that Silvio has, uh, has put together. Yep. And Silvio is uh, basically going to be showing you the website where we're not necessarily, we're not getting away from showing you more widgets. He'll show you the widgets as he's actually showing you the website. But he wanted to show you this and then, uh, and the next meetings, we'll get back into kind of going over more of the widgets. But uh, what we would like, we're going to want you to email us. Email us what widgets you want us to go over, your top three. Email us your top three. So, Scotty, or, or send it into support, however you want to do it. Email us your top three widgets that you want us to go over, and we will go over those, okay? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yes, exactly. And in any case, we're going to you know check uh some um some widgets too some new widgets or some existing widgets where we're going to go a little bit deeper into these uh, and remember that we created that special let's say widget the recycle widget uh, just for uh let's say for the need that we had for that website so uh let's start immediately as usual mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to share my screen uh and then um uh, i'm gonna come back here to the to the chat to see if there are any any questions yes yeah, so i guess you're now seeing my screen so Perfect. if there are any questions i'm going to jump a little bit back and forth and obviously scott is going to be here to to help me in this too mm -hmm. and uh i wouldn't say interrupt you i mean interrupt me but you know ask questions as we go uh, as we go on and uh you know the the i wanted to you know share uh this uh, uh to, to you know to to show you uh, since I think we we did a pretty good job with creating our uh, let's say official uh, marketing website our main marketing website and so I wanted to show you a little bit you know the process uh, that we went through and uh, also uh, a few you know tricks uh, that we used uh, to make it look exactly as we wanted with the usual uh, as you see with the usual loading speed and uh, you know and mobile you know optimization and as you see uh, there's uh, some difference between uh, the desktop and the mobile version because while we think uh, mobile and desktop should share the same content base so the same website it makes sense to show content differently to hide some pieces for mobile or to expand some others for uh, for desktop right so um the first thing is uh, uh, let's say let's go check a little bit of css and as you will see we uh, we have used extensively some css by the way now i'm also showing the let's say new uh, or what is going to be the platform uh, that we're going to use, uh, let's say, from now on. You're going to keep using the same platform that you will be using and you will have the same features. But we tried to keep a consistent branding uh, with colors and uh, uh, links uh, and fonts uh, for the platform and for the website, right? Because as you know, uh, in the white label version, you can customize... Uh, uh, apart from adding the low different logos and changing the color but you can customize also the css of your platform too so in this case uh, you would be able to um customize and again keep the branding consistent between the marketing website and in general the overall uh, brand and the platform 
So, well, the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, mm, this bit right here, which is, uh, and again, um, let, let's go a little bit over uh, some little bit of CSS, then we're going to see more of the, uh, you know, widgets and the usual things that we use in the website. But this is something that I actually discovered, I think it's been in CSS for quite some time, uh, but that I found very, very useful in uh, creating this, uh, in creating this website, because basically uh, it allows you to specify some variables, right? So um, you specify this at the beginning, at the top of your CSS. And for example, this is very useful for colors, obviously. So we called uh, these colors, uh, or better, we set these variables. So for example, primary highlight color, for example, or boot button background color. And then we gave it a color, right? So what we could do is uh, in the CSS, when we spe when we want to, for example, specify the color of a specific font, that this is uh, these um, blue right here, right? We instead of using the actual color, which would be this one, which is this again light blue, we would use uh, the variable. What that means is that first of all you can change i mean you don't have to remember and especially if you want to change even a shade or something more you know drastic so you want it from blue to i don't know red you just change it in one point in one spot right here and it gets changed everywhere it's needed throughout your css so that is something that i wanted to point out and that's something that we used uh, extensively and that made life a lot easier for us uh, because again we uh, tried quite a few combination of colors and if we had to change it manually all of the times um uh, in we we would definitely forget some spots and then the css would become a mess right now again i want to show you a little bit of css first of all because as you know i'm a firm believer that you need to learn css to use the mobi first platform and to become a, a, a proficient uh, web designer and web developer. Yeah, hey, uh, so so if you mind if I just interject here for one quick second, what are the odds that you could uh, uh, highlight that, copy it, and put it in our chat right in here live? Let's ask. Yeah, sure. I mean, but that is uh, that is very very uh, simple to use, and let's let's put it here. Yes, of yeah. course. So this one is uh, the part where you define the colors, okay, and you. Um, uh, you define it. I mean, this is standard, relatively standard CSS, uh, um, you know, syntax, right? So that's where you define the color. And then to use the color, for example, for a color, because obviously you could use it for, you see, anywhere you want to use a color, instead of uh, uh, writing the actual color code, either in RGB format or RGBA, whatever, you just type it and use it this way. Okay. So if you if you check in the um, if you check in the chat and now you see how you specify the colors, okay, right? So how you create the variables and then how you actually use it uh, in a in a CSS definition in a CSS uh, rule, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's again that's the first thing, and I mean. Again, going back to what I was saying, um, I, not everybody has to become a CSS expert, uh, but in order to become really proficient, you, I mean, the more CSS you know, the better it is. Because again, it's not just something that you learn for the, you know, the sake of learning it or just to keep it there as a general knowledge. It's something that you will be using, you might be using, and that we extensively used in order to achieve some, you know, effects, some features and some functions and some look that we had. Obviously, you can create stunning and beautiful and extremely fast websites without knowing CSS. That is why we created and we are, you know, expanding and we are, you know, growing the Mobi First platform. At the same time, if you do know some CSS, life becomes easier and you can you know manipulate let's say uh, the website uh, even more uh, than what you would do without, mm -hmm. without knowing it uh, the other 
Um, uh, John, what damage will occur if I misstep this CSS? No, nothing, um, nothing to nothing extremely uh, dangerous. Nothing. It's not like a, a, a programming language where you would get a 500 error or something like that. You would just maybe do not see, usually the rule because these are called rules. Uh, uh, the rule would be ignored. By the way, if you if you use the um, the editor, obviously in the uh, in, in in the site builder, and I'll show you. Um, for example, here we are using uh, um, a, um, a definition which does not exist, obviously. So you see that there's a there's an error here. Um, okay. Uh, it, it was it was given at the, I mean it gave you it gives you an error whenever you type something which should not be there or a, it, it does a little bit of syntax checking in any case the worst that can happen is that the rule is not applied that's uh, that's really all that can happen uh, CSS stands for cascading style sheet um, because the um, uh, the um, uh, idea is that uh, the style, okay is applied in a it's like in a cascade right so the first thing or better the last thing that is applied is the external css so if we check the source now we don't have okay you see that the css here is included right as a there are three ways by which um some css can be included in a uh, html page one is uh, including this way as a, with this frame with this uh, tag with the link tag uh, an external uh, an external file okay and if we click on this uh, or we open it in a new window we would see the actual css now this is compressed but this is basically uh, very similar to this it's just without white spaces with obviously just occupy space without uh, without any need so that's the first uh, and that's in order let's say of importance in the sense that including it from the ex an external source is the least important right then you can embed it here in the head section uh, between two style oh, the, an opening and a closing style um uh tag right so this one takes pre precedence over this one okay so you can do this and this is usually the custom css we include it so this css sorry this css right here the one that we write in the builder in the editor is then included here okay and then you can actually use it what they say it in line and let me see if we have some inline css here yes you see here in the tag the 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 html tag which is this thing right here which starts with a minus sign let's say with a square bracket has attributes one of the attribute is called style one of the you know available uh, attribute is style and then uh, this you write the css so you write style equal uh, open call uh, open quotes uh, or single or double quotes doesn't matter and then you add the CSS. This one is the one that takes precedence over everything. Obviously, this would be superseded by the important. Let's see if we have if we have it somewhere here. No, I don't think we wish the important um, let's say rule shouldn't be used because it means that you are not. Uh, yeah, okay, we have it here. Uh, you can add at the end of a CSS line of a CSS. Let's say definition the important with a um, preceding uh, exclamation point, uh, which gives it more importance, right? So it makes it win uh, against other rules. All right, so that's just a very easy and a very simple introduction to how CSS works. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Miss Kelly. Okay, what I mean to talk to you. Want to... Okay. All right. All right. All right. Awesome. So yeah, the other thing I wanted to show you is something that we don't usually use, but as you see on desktop, the uh, background is fixed. Okay, so you see that it doesn't move. We decided to use this effect because this image is pretty nice, pretty nice looking, and uh, it looks good, I think, 
um, when uh, um, uh, on on you know to stay um, fixed. So in order to do that, we use this CSS right here. You see, you specify a background image, which is this image that we just uploaded in the media library, and then you say the background attachment is fixed and the position is centered. So it is centered, let's say, in the uh, in the screen. It is always centered in the, because we uh, edited the um, uh, this image to uh, add a little black, dark background here in the middle so that the text is more readable, right, uh, in the um, in the in the center, toward the center. All right. So now let's go to the actual website. All right. So let's go here. Unless we have questions, uh, do we have specific questions? What's the view? Uh, okay, uh, John. Yeah, the, the key. Uh, well, uh, Johnny says so. The key learning is what not to tinker with. In a way, yeah. In a way, I mean, uh, what to leave alone. Yes, uh, or in general, you know, knowing exactly what you want to do, what you need to do. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Mark. What is the view source uh, URL where you just uh, to view the source of um of, of any website, any website, because any website that you see in a browser is an HTML page. It could be some JavaScript, obviously. It's either JavaScript or HTML, but you can always view the source. And just to view the source on Chrome, I'm using Chrome, but Firefox is the same. You click with the right one, and then it says uh, view source page. Now, mine is in Italian, but it's the same thing. Or you just go view source, uh, um, and then you 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 do it. And this is uh, the source of the um, of the movie first uh, yeah. uh, of the movie first website. All right. Uh, so we were saying um, that the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, um well here we uh, decided to have a very different if you noticed a very different uh, um header from desktop from desktop okay and mobile right so we used the ability for each uh, widget to have uh, to be shown only on desktop or only on mobile so the on the desktop version is very simple uh, it just has a text and a, a title and a subtitle and a button, right? So it's this one, okay? Because we decided that we wanted to add the slider uh, below on mobile, on desktop. We wanted to show, to add it below the uh, main header, right? So again, what we did is we created a very simple header, okay? And then we enabled it only for desktop. And then we added the slider. And that's a slider. And I'm going to show you what it, what that means. We added the slider below it. OK. Now, it looks like um, only the uh, images in the uh, screens, let's say, are uh, moving, right, are changing. This effect is very, very simple because we simply added three, in this case, three, four, whatever, images, which are exactly the same apart from the screens in this case, apart from the contents that we want to look, I mean, show as fading one into each other. Then we set the fade as the transition. And then with CSS, if you notice, we remove the arrows here on desktop. Okay, so the, um, that, the that is done using a media query, okay, uh, okay, play, play, none. okay, uh, yeah, no, okay, yes, you see, this is, actually, no, this is not done uh, using a media query, we do it uh, uh, by targeting the first, uh, you see, the, 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 the home page, uh, so that's the page and then the first uh, slider in the page, which is this one. OK, and then we so we say display none. That's a very handy and very simple rule. It basically say do not show that item. There are two ways by which you can hide something with CSS. Well, two main ways and there are other, a lot, ton of other ways, but two main ways. One is using the display none 
uh, rule, um, and the other one is using the visibility hidden rule. The main difference is that the display none hides it completely, so the, the thing doesn't exist on the page. Okay, the visibility hidden keeps it on the page, but it's not shown. What that means is that if there's, let's say that we set this thing right here to visibility hidden, if this, the space the, the, that the, the, this widget occupies would still be occupied by this widget, the contents would be hidden, would be invisible. If we set it to display none, this would not exist basically for the CS, for CSS, for so for um, let's say the layout sake would not exist on the page. Okay. So again, we did this, and then we did another little bit of trick in a sense that we decided we did the uh, height of the header. Um, we did the height of the header uh, to be um, uh, to be let's say seventy five percent. And then we added some negative margins to the first row only on desktop to bring up a little bit, to like make it overlap, to make the first row overlap the header, to have this uh, layout and this uh, um, you know, feature, to, you know, to, to show it exactly as we are showing it uh, right here. Okay, questions? Uh, what is the visual center? Uh, did you start from scratch or with a template to this site? No, Charles, we started from scratch. This one we started, I mean, literally from scratch. We took inspiration, let's say, from an existing WordPress template, but we started from scratch and we recreated it completely uh, on, on the platform. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Scotty, for answering. Is there a standard pixel site for most? Yeah, there are some pixel recommendations. I usually tend to use, uh, uh, let's say, 1200 by depending obviously on the orientation. So for uh, let's say usually landscape, uh, obviously portrait would be the op let's say would be the other uh, you know the other proportion. Uh, I use I usually go with uh, um, twelve hundred by the eight hundred pixels images. They uh, are the, for me at least uh, the best compromise uh, between uh, you know, quality of the image. Um, I mean capability to to be on on a very wide to be shown correctly on a very wide uh, variety of devices and uh, you know weight let's say in terms of uh, um, in terms of uh, um uh you know the, the uh, how, how much how many kilobytes they occupy uh, don't forget that always our images are always 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 passed through uh, our uh, CDN, right? Okay, which you see that uh, um, even if uh, um, even if uh, uh, the uh, our images reside, and that's a little bit, you know, I'm going a little bit more technical here, but that's you know to show you uh, what we use. Uh, even if our images reside on AWS, so we host all our images on the AWS, we pass them through a CDN, so a content delivery network, which is called Imgix, right? Which, as you see, takes um, in the um, query string, so in the URL, uh, some options, which allow us to optimize the images for the uh, device that is currently uh, using and browsing the website in that moment, right? So that means that while you have to obviously keep an eye on uh, images optimization we do the majority of the heavy lifting for you okay uh, so um i mean that the, the image size that, that i gave you in general uh, is pretty pretty useful and pretty i mean pretty effective for what for what we're doing all right all right then uh, on mobile uh, any any other question no okay on mobile you see that the page uh, is uh, uh, different okay so um, the header, we have a mobile header. And in this case, as you see, we added the images in the header and we set it to be above the whole text block for the simple reason that it looked better for us. It looked better uh, like that on mobile, right? So you see here what you can get from, from this is that you see here um, uh, that uh, um, we used... Uh, 
um, quite extensively the ability to have uh, a widget shown only on mobile and another widget shown only on desktop. Also, sorry, let's not forget that you can always, we have some um, native, let's say, uh, animations, right? So you can always add animations uh, in your widgets. Uh, in this case, we decided to use the fading from top. So it looks like they, they um, uh, you see, fading from the top. Okay. Now we didn't see it, but we should see it. We should see it here now because we here we didn't have that animation because we had we added another one anyway you can always add animations and you can choose what you want to animate if images and titles images only titles only or everything in one in one widget okay uh, you might have noticed that we have this other animation right here you see the underline in the ai powered um in the ai powered uh word and and keyword let's say that was a pretty tricky thing to do first of all because you see this uh, shape is actually done with css it's like a, a little rectangle uh, which with uh, um uh i mean craft i mean aptly crafted border radiuses so that it looks like a stroke of a pen or of a of a of a you know high, of a marker or something like that and we have it uh, uh yeah okay we have it here okay no that's the uh okay in out yeah okay you see here we have this border bottom uh, yeah this border this border radius which is a little bit weird Right, you see, we have different percentages here, and that, uh, along with a width of 100 percent and a height, I mean, it's very, uh, it's not very, I mean, very slim, let's say, not very tall, um, very short, and uh, with this border radius, it gives you this effect right here, right? It's a little bit rounded here, and then here, it's more pointy or whatever, and then we applied an animation to this, okay, which we call in out. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. And animation are extremely powerful in uh, in CSS because they allow you to animate things, as you see. Um, I mean, giving it a very you know lively effect without uh, you know affecting uh, the speed, uh, without affecting the compute power needed, and all that. And animations, uh, as it happens with actual real animations, let's say, um, are done in keyframes. Now, again, I'm going to give you a few, I mean, I'm going to tell you all this stuff because I think it's important for you to know it. And then we we, we discussed it. Obviously, it's something that you might want to study either on your own or uh, in the course that I will release. Um, but I just wanted to give you an introduction to this, right? So you know at least that these things exist and you see them in action. So basically, an animation allows you to specify um, keyframes, okay, uh, uh, as a percentage of an, a complete animation, right? So zero is the beginning of the animation, 100% is the end of the animation, right? And for each keyframe, uh, you can specify uh, some rules, right? So we basically specified two rules. One is where it should be translate X. So basically we say, that this thing goes to the left for the simple reason that we gave it a negative number right so left is negative right is positive numbers so we say start basically at minus 30 percent of your size 30 percent in this case refers to the width of the element at when you get to the 60 percent of the animation okay then translate to more plus seven percent so keep an eye on this you see that it goes back and then goes a little bit further then back again and then under the actual you know uh, keyword right so it goes seven percent to the right then seven percent back then five percent so it bounces a little bit and finally, at 100%, it goes at 0%, so it goes where it should go. 
And then, as you see, we also change the opacity, so we make it more and more um, visible, right? And if you notice, it appears while, you see, it appears while it counts. Now, what do these uh, 0, 06 and 75 percent refer to are the seconds, the time that we say when we use the here, we defined the animation and here we use it. So we say to this element, add an animation which lasts 1.1 seconds. That's, you know, the, 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 the length that we decided that looked good. And what use the in out animation, we called it in out. Okay, so use this animation and use it forward because we can say use it backwards. So starting from 100 to zero, use it in circle, right? Instead, we want it to happen just once. So it's just forward, right? And then stop when it's done. All right. Uh, is there a specific coding for CSS either desktop or mobile? Yes, of course, Chris. Thank you a lot for this question. Those are called media queries, okay? And uh, you see them a lot in action in our base CSS and also in this CSS. The media query syntax is like this, okay? Oh, so for, okay, you see that here I added a D, an arbitrary added a D, and the system alerted me that there is something wrong. So the media query says uh, it's, it's it's the for the syntax is this one okay and then it says all everything which is included in this curly bracket so between this one and this one curly bracket and as you see indentation is very important even if I mean it's very important for us humans obviously because it doesn't affect the CSS but it's important for us to understand that you know the structure of the CSS of this document anyway it says everything here apply it to stuff which has a minimum width of 1200 which basically is um uh, which basically is a desktop and above or a tablet in uh, landscape mode anyway you decide and then you can search google search the internet for the different the various break breakpoints right usually this one is the one that is used for uh, desktop, let's say, so laptop or whatever, or something which is a little bit larger. Uh, if we, instead of min width, we would say max width, okay, that would be use, apply these rules to devices or better to a media which has a maximum width. So usually it would be applied to mobile. And you see this uh, here. Uh, here, you see. We have some comments because in CSS you can have some comments too. And in this case, we say this stuff right here needs to be applied to mobile. So something which has a maximum width of 768. All right. So that's what you use uh, to target um, uh, desktop or uh, desktop or mobile. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's keep going in our website. So we then have, uh, we then have, uh, um, again, also here, we have this, uh, this content block. Then we have a normal content block, right? Where we have, a, um, where we have a main title, some text and a video. All right. As you know, you can share, you can add a video to the, uh, to, uh, any content block. Uh, just by pa pasting usually the URL, uh, either a Vmail URL, a YouTube URL, or even a Facebook URL, and then the system will take care of making it look good on desktop and on, um, uh, sorry, on mobile and on desktop too, right? Uh, so here uh, the system will then show it, and we, we say where to show it on desktop, and we said in this case that we wanted 50% to the left uh, here, right? Then we created this button, right? Now, in this case, uh, there is something pretty interesting that I want to show you. Uh, this is a regular content block, but, 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 but uh, you can specify in the additional style for this widget, okay? you can specify here in this section right here a widget 
custom class. Now here we specify two custom classes, but the one that I want you to focus on is this one. You see, we specify, we said add the class red, all right, to this, uh, to this uh, widget. What this allows us to do is that then we can go in the CSS and we can create specific rules, you see, specific CSS rules that target only widgets which have that specific class. Okay, so I, I know this is still a little bit a mystery to you, but in general, with, in CSS, classes are identified with a dot. Right, so dot red means apply these rules, or better, apply these rules and then these rules to the widget, okay, which is another class that the system adds automatically, um, which has a red uh, custom class. Okay, so what we do, what do we do? For example, very, very easily here, we specify a background. And you see that we use again the variable, you know, syntax that we shown that we've shown above. So the secondary highlight color is this uh, red, basically purple, let's say. Then we give it a border radius. You see, the border radius is this thing that makes it. I mean, makes the board. I mean, the corners uh, rounded. Okay. And then we say the color, right? So the color refers to the actual color of text, set it to the uh, white, a, a variable that we call white. Why did we use a, a variable for white, which is should be white? Because, uh, for example, in this case, this is not really white, but it's a slightly less bright color than white because it looks better. It's it's less strain, it puts less strain on your on your eyes and all that. So we can change also the definition of white. OK, so again, very important, something that you, you should be aware of is in the additional style for this widget, you have this section right here, the widget custom class, where you can add custom classes, which will be added to the widget that you can then use in the um, CSS. Also, as you see here, there is uh, these are, let's say, the definition, the default definitions, which usually apply to uh, desktop. And then these are the definitions for mobile, which are a little bit different. If you notice, the uh, border radius, uh, no, we don't have, it. yeah, the border radius on mobile is a lot less rounded than on desktop, right? How do we do that? Because we say that for mobile, remember the media query, the border radius, instead of 50 pixels, should be 10 pixels, okay? All right? So that's uh, another usage of uh, that's another huge use usage of uh, media queries. All right. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Background. Yeah. There was a little bit of. Uh, can I see this mark? This video. Yes. Well, if you're referring to, uh, if if you're referring to. Um, the uh, webinar itself, we share them at the moment on our YouTube channel. Guys, yeah, one thing I wanted to, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, guys, one thing I wanted to, to ask you is uh, um, uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to be, I mean, we are, I mean, you see it on the platform. You usually send it also in the emails. And if you can, and if you actually do like the videos, Please like the video, subscribe and like the videos, as many videos as you like. Uh, that would be really, really appreciated. All right. Uh, yes, there is some, um, uh, yes, there is some, um, ChatGPT can provide some CSS too. As usual though, especially with coding, because again, ChatGPT doesn't generate CSS. It takes, uh, I mean, it has learned what people have been typing and writing on the web and all the articles and everything, and then uh, it helps you find uh, solutions. You need to know what, what you're doing. Obviously, if you're doing something very, very simple, 
that's not a problem. Uh, just copy and, and paste the CSS. That's what I do every day. Uh, I don't uh, use, uh, I use ChatGPT for one specific thing once, but in general, what, you know, developers do is they go on, they search on Google. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's very mundane and maybe it's less fascinating than what it could seem, but like 90% of the time that we spend we spend it on Google searching for code that other people wrote that you, we adapted to a problem that we need to solve. So that's perfectly fine. The important thing is that you know what you are actually doing, right? So that doesn't replace learning uh, CSS. It makes life, it's like having an assistant which, you know, provides you with the actual code, but you need to do what, you need to know what you're actually doing. All right, so um, uh, let's let's do, let's check two more things. Uh, one is uh, that I wanted to show you that uh, uh, we already shown you this, uh, but let's see it again. The widget recycle. All right, so you've seen that we have created this widget right here. Now we are in the testimonials page. Okay, so we go in testimonials, and we see. The widget again we didn't clone it we didn't replicate it we recycled it right so you have seen this widget recycle we talked about it the, the last time and i wanted to show you again how it works again it just select you just select from the list of widgets in the whole website what widget you want to recycle then don't forget that you need to add the actual widget custom class if the, the original widget had a custom class because that this gives you more freedom, right? You can use the same widget in one spot with one class in another spot with another class, and then you just save it and it just replicates. And we did it here. We did it in the features at the bottom of the features page. Okay. Uh, we did it and now we don't have, yeah, we did it on in the, in the pricing page. No, we didn't do it here. Sorry because we uh, already have, all, this is the pricing page, so it doesn't make sense to, to actually have it here. But yeah, we did it, we, we recycled it. So again, the advantage of this approach is that when you change the original web um, widget, all of the recycled widget will be, uh, you know, changed, it will be updated automatically. You don't have to do anything, right? Okay, so that is uh, uh, one thing that I wanted to show you. Any questions here? No. Uh, and then I wanted to show you the blog, okay? Because the blog seems a little bit interesting because you see that this, uh, um, the, the pages, uh, the, all of the pages, they don't have a sidebar. But if you go in the blog, we have added a sidebar because I think it makes sense in the blog to have a sidebar. How did we do that and what is the sidebar? All right, so you see here at the bottom of this, of the list of pages, you have a thing called sidebar, right? The sidebar works exactly like a regular page, okay? Uh, in the sense that you can add uh, widgets to it, right? So in this sidebar, we added the content block. So we in this case, we did it. We, we could have recycled it, but as you've seen, uh, that's, I mean, the same function, I mean, does the same thing. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, placeholder for a button but it looks very different and also the text is different so we created a separate uh, a separate widget right so we created this other widget and also this widget has a custom has a custom style okay which is red uh, as you've noticed you see that there is a definition for a red widget and then for a red widget sidebar right so we can differentiate right if it's a widget in the regular in the normal content in the normal body or if it's a widget in the sidebar okay then we added another widget which is pretty interesting which is the search widget okay which is the search widget um which is the search widget all right which is this one the search widget allows you to specify a a, um, a widget uh, that we want to search, okay? So in this case, we define, we said we want to search, we want to limit the search only to the blog widget, which is this one, okay? 
and then it generates and then you can specify other other items here other options and so what you can do is uh, for example if you if we write the business website this search widget will search into the blog and so if you search you will get these you see all the ones that have business either in the title and it's ordered by relevance right so you see this one has business website in the title so it is presented as first all right so we added that and then we added a very simple uh, so here i want to show you another little trick uh, we added a very simple widget um with the list of links this is just a regular list of links each one linked to um a tag okay this is a little bit tricky but we have 10 more minutes so we can spend some time um uh, explaining this uh, let's do this let's go in the blog though okay so we go in the blog all right as you've seen we have the recycle widget at the, at the bottom too but anyway let's go in the blog and then let's go in an article okay each article can have some tags. Now, this one doesn't have any tags, so let's choose one which has a tag, which is, for example, you should choose. All right. Okay. So this article has uh, uh, two tags, actually. You see, mobile first platform and mobile first design, uh, which are shown here. You can click on a tag to show only articles. Uh, in that tag okay so when you click here you see we are now showing only um articles which have the mobi first platform tag and a small trick and the link to actually do this is just the url of the blog or in general the url of the site with this little thing attached to it so question mark l this is an l lt equal and then the tag okay so what you can do is you just very simply create a list of links with this lt equal and then a tag so when you click here okay now we don't have any uh, any item okay yeah we have you see this is searching for all articles which have the website development or development in this case development tag right so this allows you to basically organize your blog in topics which we call tags you can consider them topics right and then you just you can just create all of the links that you want to link to specific topics and then when people want to go back to the full list all they have to do is click on reset right so that means that brings them back to the regular list of regular list of items okay okay lunch quality assess course all right cool all right um, okay. Silvio, yeah i was on my mute there because i know i was uh, i had the background so i apologize yeah. for that and uh, I know he's got uh, just a couple of minutes left. So if we uh, have any questions coming in too, Sylvia, what I also wanted to do, because as yeah. you were going over this, I was like, wow, I, uh, I wish I was sitting in, uh, in a class watching you. Um, so here's what I'm going to, I'm going to talk to Sylvia uh, once we get done with the webinar too as well. I know Silvio is, is uh, wanting to do a CSS course and I just did a poll here and we had basically, <laughs> which would I, uh, I assume most people are going to say, yes, maybe obviously in there but not a no so no that's me sorry that was me just <laughs> you maybe want to learn from yourself <laughs> I'm not sure I'm to do yes yes of course so here's uh, here's what i'm thinking is uh, imagine if uh silvio is is already creating a course but what if silvio we had maybe a handful of these people obviously we gotta pay silvio for his time and then silvio can do it uh up to Silvio on his self and maybe just with a handful of people at the start, start kind of going over and start even teaching you, maybe even taking a look at your website and seeing how maybe some- Yeah, you no, you maybe. actually you actually brought up something very, very, very cool. I think once per month, you know, we, we tend, we will try to have these events, uh, you know, 
every week, right? So mm -hmm. on average, four per month. I think that one per once per month, if, if I mean, it depends on, you know, the response that we get. But once per month, what we can do is uh, uh, a critique mm -hmm. intended in very positive terms uh, of uh, uh, existing websites. So what you can do is uh, send over uh, your websites and I will uh, critique them. Well, obviously send them beforehand, right? So I have a little bit of time to analyze them, but send over uh, your websites and I will, uh, you know, critique them in terms of, you know, sp speed, CSS, uh, what you could have done overall, you know, user experience and, um, you know, user, um, uh, right. you know, user well, optimization right, right. and all that, right? Well, what I'm saying is on, on, on top of that, which we are going to do is what if uh, you were able to take maybe about 10 of these uh, fine people and actually on a dedicated course where, you know, they're, they're you know, they're, paying you on a, on a monthly basis, but you're actually getting in with them. Maybe we organize it over on Skype, if you will. And you're actually helping them going through everything. And then yeah. you're even building courses out of that into the next group and the next group. And then you are, you know, the people who learn it are CSS proficient from Silvio. And then let's just go, you had a website you want Silvio to take a look at. He's looking at it, giving you some of his advice on it. And then now you're out there rocking it and, and killing it. It's almost like, having him as your as your coach me as a golf instructor yeah 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 golfer. absolutely a coaching a coaching yeah that would, yeah, that would be amazing that would be amazing having you uh, actually as, as a coach looking over some of the shoulders so um Sylvia let me let's talk about that I I, I put it out and I, I was pretty sure that it'd get a lot of people be interested because I'm like I'm interested in it um so let's chit chat outside of that and then maybe we can have something uh yes. available for next uh, next webinar yes absolutely absolutely yeah that that's great that's, that would be uh that idea. would be absolutely wonderful and then silvio it gives you a chance too to see kind of the commonalities and yeah. and, and people and then kind of knowing how to tailor your your course uh, you know kind of like uh going forward so i think that'd be great yeah definitely vincent right chris jody oh heck yes and he's never offered it to uh before too as well so it it, it would be uh it would yeah. cut down on the learning curve for sure absolutely uh, all right awesome yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I guess uh, last thing, sorry, just last yeah. thing to show you uh, is that, as I've said, um, the mm -hmm. two things I wanted to show you very quickly. One is that, as we've seen, only the blog has the sidebar. So you control that here. You see, you enable the sidebar, then you decide where you want to put it to the right or to the left. And then you can say only these pages, and we selected only the Mommy First blog, will have the sidebar, right? So all of the pages don't have the sidebar because we didn't want it, but we want it in the blog, right? Uh, last thing is, uh, um, uh, okay, I forgot. I actually wanted to, to ah, yeah. Uh, last thing is uh, we, we saw that uh, you can have, uh, uh, as we said, there is another difference between the blog page and the other pages. I'm sure you immediately see it, but for who doesn't see it, these have a dark background with white content. These, the blog has a white background with dark, um, you know, with dark uh, text because we thought that it's easier to read, especially for longer articles. So you can add a custom css class for widgets but you can also add a custom css class for a whole page right so as you see we added a class that we can you can call it custom so you call it whatever you want white bg in this case and then if you go search in the css for white bg you see that it says background you see it update it, it changes um, and uh, overrides uh, because it's cascading. So it's right from top to bottom, right? So what comes after has precedence over what comes at the top. You, um, We said that the background, instead of being black, is white, and there is no background image. And then some other definitions here. For example, that in the footer, whatever, uh, we didn't talk about the footer, but for example, that the um, background of the navigation bar should always be 
because you see here it's whoops here it's transparent you see that here it's transparent and then it becomes blue when you scroll in the blog it's always blue all right so other things but you so you can control also the css and the custom class on a single page by page uh, page by page all right yeah so that was pretty much uh, it mm -hmm. Uh, uh Charles, that's a great question actually can you set up a master master variable fly, uh, file yeah sure um you can do that uh, uh you should host it somewhere else uh, uh and then you can i mean that's what css stands for in reality uh you we you cannot you know host it uh on uh, our websites and the system doesn't you know it's not uh, um you know set up to to do that uh, but you can host it anywhere on s3 on aws on any anywhere you can just upload a file and then you just include it just i, I mean that's exactly what's the first method of uh, um including a css stands for you see this one link rel equals style sheet href and then here you can put whatever url you want this is a relative url in a sense that this is you're not showing your screen anymore oh yeah okay sorry <laughs> that's let me, okay <laughs> let me share it just for a second again okay yeah we can share just this one you see the screen now are you guys uh scotty are you actually seeing the screen you, yes yes okay okay yeah so i was saying you just included here link rel equals style sheet href and then here we use a relative URL in a sense that you see there is no domain as it there is here. Uh, uh, we use a relative URL, uh, but you can use an absolute URL like this one, just like preceding it by HTTPS slash slash. And so you can have it and you can, I mean, that's exactly what this method is for. You have a CSS somewhere and you include it in all of your websites. And that is actually what we do in a sense that this one is our base CSS, which is, let's say, for the more technical inclined, is an evolution of Bootstrap, Bootstrap 3, but a very, I mean, now basically it, it's, it's, it has a life of its own, uh, but it's an evolution of Bootstrap, and then some custom CSS for each single, for each single uh, template, basically. All right. Sounds uh, good. That was it for me for today. I hope you yes. enjoyed it. Yeah, me and Scotty, we're going to talk about this. Uh, all this. Yes, we have uh, quite a few widgets to talk about, but I would like to, apart from what Scott we talked about, um, I would like to do some critique of websites, maybe. So I don't know if next time or um, in, in, in one of the future uh, Monday webinars, uh, uh, that would be something that I would like to do. Yeah, I'd love to see it too. Also, um, what I just put in for this Thursday, you'll see uh, register for our white label. I'm actually going to be starting to build an agency website. Granted, I'm not going to get in there with CSS. I'm not a CSS person to even answer somebody who's like, do you need to know CSS? Uh, I've managed to do it for almost 10 years now, and I do not know CSS. So no, you do not need to. But anytime you're given you know that you can just a bit more knowledge it increases you know your bottom line if you will right um that's basically what silvio is really saying right you can sell a website or service or whatever price but if you actually knew css and even more you could actually even just open up your book of business even larger if you will too and then you know if silvio when silvio does a course then you can look at you know hiring almost like a developer if you will to kind of look over you and make sure that you know you you did everything correctly and then you you're learning and then never looking back so it, it's awesome so yeah please do attend uh the white label webinar that uh, that i have coming up this thursday also one of the other things i wanted to let everybody know is i've mentioned it before we uh, at the very top of this chat you'll see that we are on august 24th we are going to be bringing out our academy website um, and with a whole lot of goodies that kind of go along with it. So our Academy, which has never been out, is coming out as a white label, uh, unlimited reseller towards the end of this month. So at the top of this uh, chat, you'll see that as well. Let me see if I can actually grab it real quick. 
Um, you're going to want to attend that one because wait till you see our academy. Let's go over into here. Wait, I'll grab this one. It is a monster. I, I remember at one point, actually, even Sylvia was, it's his favorite creation <laughs> is the academy. So there's yeah. that one in there. So essentially, now I'll let everybody know it's going to be a pre-sales. It's going to be something that we're going to be offering it as, as for you to purchase. And then a whole lot of goodies are, are kind of coming along with it, too. Some stuff that we've never ever released before uh, something so powerful that uh, i'm only going to uh, release it to the first 10 people that actually come in on it it's that big so um either way you're going to want to attend that one to see our academy in action and myself my team and then sylvia is going to be running through that too and wait till you see academy folks just wait till you see that one so again everybody thank you so much yeah i just wanted to add one thing scotty uh, never had to learn css and i'm glad about it because he has you. Couple, right? <laughs> That's because the other thing. There's me and me and him, and I. I, I know people, <laughs> and, and I didn't have to learn uh, sales. Like, and you know, he didn't have to learn sales. Right. It's right. the one thing that so, I teach in my white label one is how I got that. You know, kind of like not only do I actually show the white label platform, I get into a little bit of my mindset and what I've done and how I've learned to actually uh, get to that point too. So I always say I have a button. I mean, I know the answer, but I can click a button, hit a button, and I'll get it answered. And that's one of the biggest things in, in creating a, an entrepreneur business, if you will. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you, guys. Sylvia, thank you. Thank you. And Dean Broadcast. Bye-bye.